Good Monday, this is Jamie Sumner, Chief Analyst of Sea Freedom Brew. We're, today we're going to just take a look at the net interest margin of the community banks looking back from the first quarter of 2016 to the first quarter of 2015 and seeing how um, the net interest margin has played in here. Now we've been saying for the past couple of years to anticipate the net interest margins to begin to contract in here. And we haven't really seen that year over year uh, as we look back in history. However, the last couple of quarters, we've started to see this net interest margin begin to compress. So as you can see here, the net interest margin for these community banks goes from the first quarter of 2015 of a 3.67. We kind of peaked out here in the third quarter of 2015 at a 3.75 and then from there we start to uh, come back down and now we're down at the, for the first quarter of 2016 down to a 3.71 now we have to ask ourselves why is this occurring and there's a number of different reasons that this could occur uh, one could be the overall cost of funds uh, however what we've seen here with inside the cost of funds is it basically flatlining at a 0.47%. So this is where we've been throughout the last five quarters at this 0.47%. So therefore you could say that the cost of funds play has ended. There's no real room to move down cost of funds as we move forward below this 0.47% without impacting some of our deposit retention. So from there we have to uh, assume that it's the yields on earning assets that have increased. And in fact, that is exactly what has happened. We've seen these yields begin to go up. Now the question is, why are these yields going up with inside of our balance sheet? Is it due to the interest rate environment? Is it due to the duration or the, the, the average life of the overall balance sheet? Or is it due to the interplay with inside the balance sheet of the different types of assets we're holding today? So let's take a look at the interest rate environment. Overall, looking at the U.S. Treasury yield curve between the first quarter 2015 and first quarter 2016, we can, we can see that overall, this red line being um, 2016 and the blue dotted line 2015, that the long end of the yield curve has actually come down a little bit. And as you know, the majority of our assets are priced and based off that long end of the yield curve. So it can't be the overall yield environment within here. And we can see that occurring with inside of our balance sheet here and the assets that we have on our books. We had the loans, which in the first quarter of 2015 were at a 5% on average, and now they're down to a 4.95%. So it's coming down a little bit, just like we saw with inside the U.S. Treasury market. The investment portfolio we saw increase just slightly from a 213 to a 214. Now, mind you, these investment portfolio yields are not tax effective. So these are the straight yields here without any benefit of those tax-free uh, municipals. So we can say that the yields, the asset yields, hasn't really um, generated that much more yield for our overall yield on earning assets. So perhaps it's the, the repricing or the maturity structure of our balance sheet. And we look at that loans in the first quarter of 2015 at a 4.44 years compared to the first quarter of 2016 at a 4.45. So we see a slight extension, but not enough to indicate that we're gonna see this larger uh, increase in the overall yield and earning assets. And on the investment side, actually, we see a decline here from a 7.9 year to a 7.88 year, so a slight decline. Again, the duration or the maturity structure of our balance sheet hasn't changed enough to indicate that we're gonna see this large increase or this increase in the overall yielding earning assets. So it leaves us with one other option, and that's the structure overall of the balance sheet. 
And in fact, this is what we see. The loans to asset ratio has increased year over year from 65 basis points up to that 67 basis points. So we see 200 basis points or two percentage points moving from investments or cash into the overall loans, which is pushing up that overall yield on earning assets. Now the question we have to ask ourselves here is at what cost is this occurring? Are we taking on more and more credit risk with inside of our loan portfolio to provide us with this additional yield? So that's the weight that we have to um, take into consideration is the yield versus the credit risk with inside here. We haven't really seen inside of our model uh, the credit risks start to increase right now, but oftentimes once a couple years go by or a couple quarters, we might begin to see that credit risk indicators start to creep up. But it's hard to believe we're halfway through the second quarter and the question is what do we anticipate happening in the second quarter? With rates where they are today or where they were on Friday, we can see that, that on the, the first quarter ended with the blue dots and the solid red line is the May 20th or last Friday. We see a little bit of an uptick with inside uh, the rates, which is what we'd anticipate seeing right now. And overall, the spread between the 10-year and the two-year treasuries has contracted here. In the first quarter of 2016, it was 1.05. Currently on Friday, it was 0.96. A little bit of contraction. If we look back to the first quarter of 2015, it was much wider. Um, so that's the question we have to ask it, ourselves is well, how is this going to impact our net interest margins? And intuitively, I would say we're going to start, we're going to continue to see a small compression with inside of net interest margin coming into the second quarter. We'll see an increase in the overall level of net interest income, but that compression on the net interest margin is going to uh, take place. So that's what we have for you today. Join us next week again on Monday uh, when we review over the second release of the first quarter GDP. Have a great week.